In this section, let us understand why CNFs. I mean, what was the requirement of CNFs? Why they were required when we already had VNFs? So, if we see the evolution of telecom services from 1G to 5G, uh, present day. So, what we see there is there are a lot of uh, improvements like earlier it was only some analog voice technology in 1G and then started the SMS with digital voice and then 3G came then 4G in 2010 and then around in 2020 5G. So, now it's all whole multimedia, a lot of broadband services, high speeds and various other services. But if we talk about their infrastructure, then straight away from 1G to 3G, it was all on traditional proprietary hardware. Okay, separate racks, legacy racks for each node, and every vendor had its own proprietary hardware operating system and software. Basically, everything was proprietary. In 4G, as we understood, like we converted it into VNFs, and in 5G going forward there comes the CNFs okay so VNF was virtual network function a group of VMs and CNF we can call it containerized network function which is group of parts so VNF had limitations so let us see what limitations VNFs had so VNFs were actually lift and shift of old software into a large VM uh, generally if I say this statement, this is a general statement. In majority of the cases, this was the uh, thing. Okay, so the developers just lifted the old code and shifted that code into uh, a large VM without changing its architecture. So no change in architecture of the application. No, they didn't change the architecture. They just lifted that code and instead of running into their proprietary hardware, they were now running it into a VM, virtual machine. So, which creates difficulty in software upgrades of a particular application component. Okay. So, in this case, like we, we can understand if let's say I want to, I want to improve any one particular module of the software or I want to fix one particular bug. So, I have to touch the whole source code of the application and I have to upgrade the newer version and software upgrades for VMs or VNFs is a tedious task. Okay, So this was one limitation. Still the VNF must be adapted for onboarding to the specific infrastructure like VMware, OpenStack, Oracle etc. What I mean by this statement? I mean that you cannot run uh, an, an OpenStack based heat stack file onto VMware infrastructure, right? Or you cannot run uh, uh, a, a VNF which was uh, a, a VNF descriptor file or a VNF file, VNF stack, which was running on VMware infrastructure. You cannot just lift it and run it on OpenStack. No. So still that infrastructure dependency is there. Okay. So you can run the application from one OpenStack infrastructure to another OpenStack infrastructure that is possible. But from VMware to OpenStack or from OpenStack to Oracle or any other infrastructure, let's say public cloud, it is not that much easy to migrate your VNFs between these infrastructures. Okay, So somehow that infrastructure dependency is still there. No standard protocols or configuration policies for VNF across vendors. Okay, so what happens is when my same infrastructure hosts VNFs of different vendors. So let's say I have an OpenStack rack, based rack, and it contains uh, VNFs from Nokia also, VNFs from Ericsson also, VNFs from some other vendor also. But in between these VNFs, uh, there is no, there are no standard protocols which can uh, by which I can configure all these VNFs together or I can interact with them 
no so uh, one vnf user uh, will generally work on uh, its own vnf and it does not touch the other vnf okay so somehow that that management of configuration and standard protocols is missing okay no open api is exposed by the vnfs still a lot of manual actions required each time to configure update and testing for vnfs okay so vnfs doesn't open um, doesn't expose any open apis with the infrastructure okay so uh, you deploy a vnf okay now you give that vnf to the vnf user so the vnf user logs into it and and uh, does all the management somehow the infrastructure is not that much open i mean there is there are no apis between the infrastructure and the vnf by which the infrastructure can itself manage the vnf okay there there are some lcm actions which can be done but not all okay vm image size is uh, is a problem uh, so vnfs means group of vms and every vm has an has a guest operating system which is an overhead so because of that uh, the image size of the vm is quite heavy i mean sometimes the image size goes in uh, gbs like 5 gbs 10 gbs 6 gbs like this okay if the vnf is is a high configuration vnf as compared to cnfs which makes it hard for scalability at large i mean so obviously if you have a heavy disk size or heavy image size it will be difficult to scale Uh, at large i mean you cannot just uh, copy this vnf 100 times you cannot create 50 copies of the vnf in a click why because you need a lot of disk space right so this this is uh, this is also one of the problem so in nutshell vnfs are not cloud native still okay so we we saw that we have cloudified the core network or cloudified uh, the lte in most cases uh, in uh, on telco clouds so for just the sake of saying it it is cloudified but is it is a still not purely cloud native so what is cloud native let's understand in the next section mm -hmm.